Hey guys, Big Jonas here coming to you Tuesday night. Just had our daily candle close. Want to talk about the daily chart and look at that. Bitcoin recaptures MA50, MA100. Now these were kind of, you know, swimming very close to each other. So the recapture of both of them would be inevitable as long as we were able to get over one of them because they're so close. Um, even though we did have the bear cross of the 50 under the 100 a few days ago. So now we are above these two indicators for the first time since basically a month ago, mid-June. Now, what's also notable about this is the recapture because of the failed support of the MA50 and that MA, sorry, the MA200, our red line there, which has basically held support all the way since October lows. So very meaningful area here. Now we have our 200 racing up. We have our 50 and our 100 still at a down angle, definitely slowing their descent here. And at some point, all three of these um, indicators here, moving averages are gonna converge. And we can see basically what happened the last time when all three of these really were able to converge um, in a meaningful way. It was a very explosive move uh, for Bitcoin price action. So it's very hard to be bearish. Um, when the price action is over the 100, the 50, and the 200, as Bitcoin actually currently is right now. I do want to bring up our Bollinger Bands here. And I've talked about the breach of the lower Bollinger Band, the recapture of the middle Bollinger Band. And now we're basically pushing up against the upper Bollinger Band the past three days. We do have our Bollinger Bands slightly widening uh, on the daily chart here. And we'll be able to keep an eye on this. But MA20 support has basically acted as resistance from early June, especially right here, major rejection here, 1st of July, is now acting as support. So we're going to see how long we can keep riding up our upper Bollinger Band, again, on the daily chart. And the EMA 12 and 26 here, now been the bear cross since mid-June, about to test a bull cross here, um, probably need another day or so to confirm it, but we are right at the cusp here of doing that bull cross. Now, you know, lower time frames like the daily, um, these can kind of zig and zag. We can see they basically held all the way from February to April. We were in a bear cross from April to May, regained our bull cross from May to June, and now we've been in this bear cross from June all the way to where we currently are here. So probably one more day or so to get this to actually confirm um, that bull cross there on the daily chart. I want to mention our Ichimoku here. Very interesting how like reacquiring support in the cloud and then um, yesterday's kind of back test. See how the wick here literally went right to the bottom of the cloud support and held and bounced. Upper cloud resistance right at around 66K. It's very curious to see how the price will interact um, with that upper cloud boundary as it failed to hold it as support. But we can see down here back in May, the lower cloud acted as support and failed to hold it as support here. So the reacquirement of that is key using that 62.3 area looks like um, as that overall support. Uh, let's see here. Let's take a look at some oscillators. Mentioned last time uh, the, the notability of our CMF here uh, kind of blasting through. This is a very quick and very uh, big move here uh, in our CMS. We were kind of chalking around here, um, but something like this and something like this, we get these very quick up thrusts. And this is very similar to that from, you know, July 11th here, we were minus 0 0.09 and now we're basically up uh, 0.11. So that's quite a move here and definitely an indication of significant money flow. Uh, flowing in. MACD building up our histogram bullishly here. Our fleeting indicator here is actually supposed to about to go into the positive. First time we've done that since mid-June and our trailer is coming up here. So these are what you want to see. We had our high, we had our low, we had our higher low, we had our lower low and now we're basically coming back up to our center line here on our indicators. Um, the all important on balance volume. Again, I'm on the daily chart here. We can see a little divergence here. Um, price action, which is kind of up here, but our OBV is still kind of down here. So even though we're seeing that massive move in the price, a little bit of a lagger here, I still feel, um, in our daily OBV, kind of in this chop area here. Um, you know, nearest resistance is kind of right there. 
and we're getting very close to it. I would like to see our OBV in the next day or so, uh, you know, close above this line here, which has been basically resistance, and we're basically uh, back testing it on the underside here. Very healthy daily RSI at 62. Notice how quickly we were able to just ramp up here. We have similarities of that ramp here, right, and here. Very meaningful moves here. Still not very extended, although you can see our indicator here, our moving averages pretty far away, right? Here's our RSI, here's our, our moving average. And, um, you know, when we get kind of ahead of our skis here, the RSI tends to at least wait for um, our moving average to kind of catch up with it here. And uh, because we're so far away here, it would be healthier uh, for, um, you know, maybe a little sideways continuation price action, a little consolidation uh, to bring these uh, in alignment here. Because uh, right now our RSI is really just cranking, uh, obviously, with our current price action. Our Stoke, we have both our indicators now at our 100 line here. Um, first time we've had that since February. You know, and that's very notable. Uh, all the bullishness we've had basically through uh, the bullishness, but the consolidation we've had from 74 to 58, back to 71, 53. Um, all those moves hasn't gotten us uh, to the 100, 100 on both our indicators uh, since February to right now. So that is notable, but it also kind of denotes that maybe this move needs to kind of chill out a little bit here and see if we can consolidate because of both of indicators are almost pegged pancake flat. Now we've seen before where we can kind of hang out here um, for several days with both indicators uh, at the top of our range here, but no more than like three, four, five days max looks like, you know, three, four days, three, four days, uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, about four days here. So we're just getting into, I'd say day two of having both indicators pretty much close to the top. And lastly, I want to talk about our squeeze momentum. You know, this was showing us bullish divergence as our price action was doing a lower low. We were actually putting in our higher low on our histogram coming down of our trenches here and into our, um, you know, green mountains. And this has been quite a move here. You can see the, the staggering of previous moves, you know, kind of slow and steady, slow and steady. And this is just boom, boom, boom because of the speed of which we've moved in the past several days. So very good sign here, positive to be up in the, the mountains instead of in the valleys here. Um, you know, we can, we can definitely draw a descending trend line here, seeing that we've broken, you know, this kind of here's our high, here's our lower high, and now we've kind of broken that mold there. Um, so we're going to see how higher um, we can kind of build this mountain here after this pretty impressive move in price action. I'm going to keep this video pretty short just to basically talk about, you know, from a horizontal standpoint, what is the next meaningful areas of resistance? And I talked about this in the last video that really that 67K area from a horizontal standpoint is pretty much that area where we had seen uh, major resistance become major support and then that support failed to hold, okay? So we can come back up to as high as 67K and still be once again retesting the underside of this area back in June that held meaningful support until it was lost. So definitely some amazing price action in, in, in uh, Bitcoin here. We're gonna keep an eye on this and see how we play out through the week. Still pretty early on in the week here. Just a quick look at our weekly candle here. You know, nothing to really complain about that. Obviously, the past two weeks have been very impressive in Bitcoin price action, putting in that lower low here and then basically advancing up here. It's also the first time in a while we've had a low break into a higher low. That's been some time since we've done that. But, you know, as you can see, still five days left in our weekly price action. So big us with a quick daily Bitcoin update. Keep it in touch. Talk soon.